Hello everyone! My plan for today was to talk about a few movies directed by Ishiro Honda that I found on the Criterion channel. However, I've only gotten to watch two of the four, so I'll have to postpone that for a couple weeks. The good news, if you like it when I talk about books, is that instead I'm going to do a reading update. It's been a long time, it feels like it's been a long time at least, since I did one of these. I fell into a reading slump for a while, so I just haven't had anything to talk about. But also, I've kind of realized that I don't enjoy doing these videos as much. It was never my intention with this channel to tell everybody about every single book I read. And then all of a sudden, I started doing that. And then it became an expectation. And... It started to change what I read and how I read and my enjoyment from reading. I found myself getting hung up on what books other people would be interested in and planning what I was going to say while I was reading and worrying about how in depth I should go and it just sapped the fun out of the whole thing. But I know some of you do look forward to these videos and I don't want to disappoint you so I'll keep doing them. Just not often. As for the reading slump, I do seem to be out of it. I know that I'd started to develop some bad habits, like if I finished a book, I wouldn't let myself start a new one until the next day, which would often turn into a few days, and then that kind of... You, you lose the habit of reading if you don't do it for a while. And I'd started telling myself I couldn't concentrate on a book while my mom was watching TV in the same room. Which is ridiculous, that's not true. And, uh, probably the worst bad habit is I would watch videos on my phone before bed instead of reading a chapter or two. Which is not good, especially for my eyes. <laughs> Plus, something I shared with people on my coffee page is that I found myself in the same boat as other readers on social media who confess to focusing more on quantity over quality. It's embarrassing to admit that, but yeah, I there were times when I was more focused on how many books I had read and I would choose one book over another because it was shorter, it was lighter, it looked like it wouldn't take me as much time as something else, and ugh, I don't want to be doing any of this stuff anymore. So now that I've identified some of the problems, I'm trying to fix them, and I'm trying to break the bad habits and get back on the regular reading track. The biggest thing that's helped with that is that I have made time on purpose for reading. Most days I make a to-do list and I started putting reading on there. Not to make a task out of it, but to remind myself to take time each day to just sit down and read. Half an hour, a whole hour, and to read whatever I felt like, rather than trying to keep the genres mixed up for some future discussion. I don't want to read for a video. I want to read because I love reading. <laughs> anyway, now you know where things stand, and maybe you can get some encouragement out of all that if you have found yourself in a similar situation. I'm now going to share some books I have read in the past few months. I'm not going to go super in-depth with any of these descriptions or critiques. Just gonna rattle off some thoughts I had on each one. I read The Dinosaur Lady by Anne-Marie Duquette, a paleontologist who hosts a show for children on public television, and a guy who owns a physical rehabilitation ranch are brought together by a little boy who discovers a fossil on the property. This was a nice story, not nearly as goofy as the silly title and the cheesy covered art suggest, um, it's a little goofy and a little cheesy, but it's quite sincere, and I liked it, except for the jabs against Jurassic Park and the kids who loved it and were inspired to search for dinosaur bones in their backyards. <laughs> hey now! <laughs> I was one of those kids! <laughs> I read The Red Box by Rex Stout. Uh, my sister gave me this Nero Wolf 2-in-1 years ago, 
and I read the first book in the collection, The Rubber Band, but for some reason I never read the second one. I, I knew that I needed to read it. It was there on my shelf, and I was like, oh, I gotta do that. And then when my brother hopped on the Nero Wolf bandwagon with us, um, he read both of them, and I was like, ooh, I gotta do that. Uh, but it wasn't until the end of last year when I was on a getting things done kick that I said, okay, I'm just gonna do it. So I finally read it, and it was very good. A murder mystery that revolves around a poisoned box of chocolates. The last book I read in 2023, which I forgot to take a picture of before I returned it to the library, was Goodnight Mr. Tom by Michelle Magorian. During World War II, a reserved, underdeveloped little boy from London is sent to a country village to escape the Blitz. He is housed with a curmudgeonly old man who doesn't know what to do with him, but though they make an odd pair, the boy begins to flourish, and then he is summoned back home. And things happen, but I'm not going to go into any more detail than that. This was a really good book. I guess you could make an argument that it's juvenile fiction, since it's about children. But I was shocked to find it taking a very dark turn, and because of some of the mature content and subtext, I wouldn't recommend it for young readers. There is humor, and there are adventures, but it also has some tragedy and some very bleak stuff. I believe it did make me cry. Speaking of not for kids, but for an entirely different reason, I accidentally started the year with a smutty book, <laughs> Yours Until Dawn by Teresa Medeiros. From that title, I probably should have known. This Regency romance is like Beauty and the Beast with an invalid nurse pairing. A young woman with a past comes to a duke's dusty... duke's dusty... I think he's a duke, Dusty Mansion to take care of a blinded veteran of the Napoleonic War. It's a charming story with a quick pace and fun interactions between the characters that kept the relationship progressing in an enjoyable way. But I hated the last part. The guy turned into a complete jerk and... <laughs> also, <laughs> this was way too spicy for me, and every time it went in that direction, the writing quality just fell off a cliff, with so many cliches that made me roll my eyes as I was skimming through. If she described his chest hair one more time, I was gonna scream. I found out that my library network had acquired reprints of the Cherry Ames series by Helen Wells. When I was little, tearing through Nancy Drew and Judy Bolton and the Vicky Carr Flight Stewardess series, which Hel Wells also wrote, I always wanted to try this series. It was listed in the back of those books as a, hey, if you like this, you might also like these books, because they were published by Grosset and Dunlap as well. But unfortunately, they were long out of print, um, and I never found any copies in the library or at any used bookstores. So I thought that door was closed. I was very excited to find them in the catalog. I can't remember how I happened to discover that. But I borrowed the first one immediately. It's titled Cherry Ames Student Nurse. And it's set in 1942, at the beginning of America's official involvement in World War II, and it speaks in such glowing terms of the nursing profession that it does read like a recruitment pamphlet, but it's got good scenarios and there's fun dialogue between Cherry and her friends. So while I probably won't read the entire series, I would definitely read another. I read Irma Bombeck's If Life is a Bowl of Cherries, What Am I Doing in the Pits? I had heard someone else share their appreciation for Irma Bombeck's style of humor, and that sparked my interest, so I checked this out. There's no individual topic here, 
it's a collection of humorous reflections on life, aging, child rearing, shopping, cleaning, running a household efficiently in a time of inflation, which was the 70s, but a lot of that is still relevant today. Um, I was surprised that it was as hit or miss as it was. There were plenty of hits, but many of the references are dated. Some of the grievances she describes I just can't relate to. I don't have a husband and I don't have children, so I could laugh at some of it, but it didn't strike a chord with me, per se. And it's kind of a challenge to plow through a book where each chapter is on a different topic, but then within the chapter there are sections that just jump around, and each paragraph is a new joke. It's like reading the transcript of a stand-up comedian's show. Very strange. <laughs> it was funny, though, and sometimes it was really funny. Until the last chapter, when Bombeck does an about-face and gets devastatingly serious about how difficult it is to watch your parent get older and start depending on you more and more, and this whole thing came out of nowhere and it hit so hard that suddenly I was sobbing. Uh... That was the most important part of the book. It's the thing that I have taken away from it. Uh, the thing that I'll remember, and that's good. But there was nothing in the first 10 or 12 chapters that prepared me for it. I read Nightfall and Other Stories by Isaac Asimov. In full disclosure, I actually only read about half of the book. Um, I went on Goodreads after reading the first four or five stories and decided I would uh, see what the overwhelming majority of people didn't like and skip those ones. I did read the page of introduction before each story and uh, those were always very entertaining. Um, Isaac Asimov, when he is just writing to the reader, is quite amusing. And, um, he acknowledges that some of these stories are not so good, <laughs> um, but he explains why he's including it, he points out the one interesting thing about the story, and why it was perhaps a benchmark in his career. The main reason I got the book was to read Nightfall, which is considered one of the best science fiction short stories ever written, and it was very good. It's very tense, even though much of it consists of characters sitting in a room debating whether or not something is going to happen, while anxiously looking out the window. I also especially enjoyed What If, a refreshingly wholesome and surprisingly romantic story. That's a rare thing from Asimov. And I also got a big kick out of What Is This Thing Called Love? A hilarious satire of a satire, which is very funny, but also <laughs> a little bit risque in a tongue-in-cheek way. I just couldn't stop laughing over the aliens' dialogue and reactions. Uh, I will give the edge to Nightfall. It is the superior story, but in terms of what did I get a bigger kick out of? What is this thing called? Love is the winner. <laughs> I read Dark Harvest by Will Jordan. When I first heard about this, I was immediately hooked by the premise. It's about an outbreak of a deadly new virus, but it also talks about the Dyatlov Pass incident of 1959, which is one of those real-life unsolved mysteries that is endlessly fascinating. That's where the book starts, and it was great. But there wasn't as much of that as I had hoped. The book is fine, the writing is very good, and the story is engaging. My main issue is that this just isn't the type of book I enjoy reading. It's an action-heavy thriller with lots of fights and shootouts, and I don't read that genre. 
I've never read a Tom Clancy book, but this was kind of what I imagine a Tom Clancy book is like. Or Clive Cussler, or Robert Ludlum, is he the one who wrote the Bourne books? I would rather watch a movie than read play-by-play -play descriptions of action scenes. So this wasn't really for me, even though uh, the summary sounds right up my alley. Also, the final twist was disappointingly predictable, and that was a letdown. But there were other things in the book that I did not see coming, um, went in a direction that I had not anticipated at all, and that was cool. <laughs> it is kind of gross and graphic, um, but I enjoyed that aspect of it. <sighs> Unfortunately, for as much as I was excited to read this, I do have mixed feelings about it. I read The Matchmaker's Lonely Heart by Nancy Campbell Allen. This is a historical novel set in late Victorian England. Somehow I wasn't aware, or had forgotten, that it was both a romance and a murder mystery. Because I was looking for a nice love story, I wasn't really on board with this, <laughs> and after the first couple chapters I considered dropping it. But I read a little further, and I got hooked. I would say that the romance and the mystery are split 50-50. The crime aspect is gripping, less who done it, more how to catch the killer, but the love story is quite romantic and nice. This comes from a series called Proper Romance, and it was indeed very proper. And lastly, I read A Memory Between Us by Sarah Sundin. This is a World War II novel about a pilot and a nurse stationed in England who become friends, but any possibility of romance between them is stymied by personal issues of shame, pride, and fear. Once again, I started reading without checking any blurbs or reviews, so I was surprised to find out within a few pages that this is also, and primarily, Christian fiction. Now, I didn't have a problem with that. I am a Christian, so that was okay. It was especially okay because this was better written than some of your average Christian fiction. There are a couple spots where I suppose the writing could have been more sophisticated, where the dialogue verges on corny, but in this instance I feel like that is appropriate to the setting. Um, if it was set today it would be awful, <laughs> but Characters talk like they're in a movie made in the 1940s. But it's a very good story that handles the maturity of its content with a gentle touch. I will warn potential readers that there are some adult situations described here, not in offensive detail, but they are there. They're important to the story. Um, I most appreciated the depth and honesty of the characters. This isn't just a love story where you hope the couple will get over their hang-ups and end up together. It's about two people, each struggling to trust God wholeheartedly with everything in their lives, no matter what comes. And that's a struggle I think every Christian is familiar with. And with that, you're up to date on what I've been reading lately. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on any of the books I talked about or on what you've been reading in the comments below if you'd like to share. I will be back next week to talk about what else I saw in February. Thanks for watching.